the mic. All right then. Maybe I have to have more. You need two mics. No, I'm good. I, I do this for a living. I'm okay. Okay, so I th uh, I'm going to go ahead then with the, with the mic. Uh, Rekha, thank you for uh, for uh, for having me and for uh, I'm sure this has been a very busy few months for you for preparing the Innovation Week. Um, my name is Ayman. My area of specialty is dig digital and social media. Um, I do some work with uh, clients on how best to use different web, mobile, and social media techniques to better improve their businesses. So uh, I do that as part of an agency that, that, that I manage. Um, I prepared many things today related to Instagram and how to use it for business, but I'd like to gauge a bit more the audience about why you're here. I, I, I spoke with some of you, some of you want to run ads, some of you haven't been on Instagram at all, others are active on it, so I'd like to know a bit more from you, what type of things would you want us to discuss for Instagram uh, before I go through, through all of my material? So, uh, why are you guys here today? Yes. How to advertise, so Dunya, been, yeah, yeah. We've been using Instagram as a free platform over the past few years, and now things are changing, so we okay. what, what does that mean for the business? Okay, so you want to use it as a business or as an agency doing this for clients? Uh, as, a, as an individual. As, as an, as an, okay, okay, so how to use Instagram ads, all right. Uh, that's, one, that's one action item, what else? To establish if it is um, a platform suitable for our company. Uh, okay, what, what, does, what, does your company, uh, what does your company do? What industry are you in? Um, outsource payrolls. We do payrolls for other companies. Uh, outsourcing what? Payrolls. Payrolls, okay. Oh, so it's business to business. Okay. All right. Are you sure you want to use Instagram? Uh, That's what we want to find. Okay. All right. All right. All right. And LinkedIn might be, you know, and I've covered the session. LinkedIn might yeah. be a bit more, uh, more of interest. Um, okay, what, what else? How to reach out to a specific audience and hashtags and so on. All right, all right. How would you measure Instagram for sales? All right. What, sure, sure. What industry? What industry are we talking about? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, business to business or business to consumer? Both. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. Um, if you want, during the sessions, just feel free to, to raise a hand, ask a question. So during the session or, or after that, whatever works for you. Um, how much time do we have together? 40 minutes? We have one hour. An hour together, OK. <coughs> All right. Um, just, uh, just to cover uh, a few things, just to, just to have some perspective on size and volume of Instagram versus others. So um, a, a, study, uh, a study done by, by uh, uh, the uh, Social Media Influencer Summit this year is we're looking at the channels in the Arab world. You get to see that uh, Facebook, Facebook, and Facebook and WhatsApp are the, one of the largest in terms of volume and size and usage throughout the Arab world as a whole. Um, and then you have a penetration of Instagram. We're looking at 34%. Uh, usage of Instagram, that's on average throughout the, 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 the Arab world, and that, and that continues to grow. If you want to zoom in specifically to the UAE, we're looking at 56% uh, usage based on the study uh, that was done. So you have a good active population of, uh, uh, of users that are on Instagram. And if you look at Saudi Arabia, also another big market in the region. Uh, okay, we lost the mic. Uh, so another big market in the region, also Saudi, we're looking at a 43% penetration for, uh, uh, for, Instagram, for Instagram usage. So there's a lot of growing use of Instagram throughout, uh, throughout the Arab world. Uh, and also when you look at, I'm just going to list here a few businesses that are based in the UAE. They started off as Instagram accounts. So they started off as posting images and pictures of Instagram accounts. And gradually, they grew to become full-fledged businesses. You know, they started selling online, but some of them now have their own stores. They have their own locations. A lot of them still sell online, but they started with an Instagram account. So they started with an Instagram account posting about the products that they do, uh, things that they use. And from that, they built a community around them. And from that, they've been able to start to sell uh, whatever it is that they're selling, whether it's food-related items, accessories, uh, and so on. So th these are UAE-based uh, businesses 
that have started with virtual accounts and now they have one store, two st physical stores, one, two, three. They still sell a lot of their, uh, a lot of their services uh, throughout the internet. Right. Uh, and, and, and all of this has been shared uh, with the organizers who will share it with you at, uh, at some point. When, when, when will this be shared with the rest, with everybody else? After, after this, so. where, 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 can they, where can they find it? We'll just share the link. Yeah, okay, so there's a, there's a link to be shared somehow, somehow. All right, now, one of the differences, I think seem to be burning mics today. You have a problem. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Uh, uh. So uh, one of the main major differences with Instagram versus others, something called organic reach. Organic reach meaning all right, round three. So organic reach, meaning when you post something on Instagram, people get to see it. So if we want to look at Facebook, for example. So let's say we have a community size of 100,000 people. So 100,000 likes on a Facebook page. And you post something on your Facebook page as a business. Um, what percentage of people do you feel would see that? We're looking at 80, if you post something saying, we're at UAE Innovation Week, uh, at N5, and so on. If you post something like that. What percentage? 5%, 80%, 6%, 1%, what are we talking about? 2%. 2%? All right, so with Facebook posting, we're looking at Facebook specifically, organic reach is very, very low. It's close, it's between two and 4%. So what that means is we're all here in the same room. We're all here, uh, you know, I'm here and I'm speaking, uh, you know, dressed nicely, try, 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 you know, trying to sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I don't have a mic and only a few people around me here can, can, can hear me. So the rest of you, although we're in the same room, you can't hear what I say unless I put in a credit card, that, which is basically a mic that says, you guys in the back can go ahead and, and hear me. So why does Facebook do this? To making money, money is one, but there's also another issue. Uh, us as users, on average, we have 300 friends uh, and above in terms of number of friends around us, and we like around 50 pages. So Facebook would need to show us every day, if they want to show us everything, they need to show us around 1,500 posts, which is, you know, when it's not humanly possible to sit down all day on Facebook, going through 1,500 posts from, you know, ex-bosses, ex-girlfriends, ex-family and family members that we don't want to talk to and so on. So what Facebook does is it, it, it identifies content that it feels is of interest to us. So for example, let's say you stalk a person. I know nobody here stalks other people on Facebook, but you know, let's say you do, all right? You'll get to see that more and more of that person's content and their posting will show up in your newsfeed because you check their profile a couple of times a day, Facebook you know, knows that you're interested somehow, so they, they, bring, they start to bring their content to you. If you notice, if you chat with other people on, on, on their, you, their Facebook Messenger, you get to see more of their stuff. If you like and comment and share on other people's stuff, uh, more of their stuff appears. So Facebook does some form of analysis and algorithm to decide on what is of interest to you. So this is why you get to see family members that you haven't spoken to on Facebook in years. You know, they will rarely show up in your, in your, in your newsfeed. So, uh, so that's why the feed that we get on Facebook is not organic, it, it's, it's filtered in a way due to the volume of activity on it and the way Facebook works. With Instagram, it's a bit different. So when you're following people on Instagram, you get to see most of what they post. So even if today, let's say over the last few hours you've been in morning sessions here, when you next open up your Instagram feed, uh, whatever how you've missed in the last few hours, you'll get to see a good deal of most of it based on who you follow. So the organic reach is big. What that means for you as a brand or as a business, which is part of our, uh, you know, a good part of our topic today, is that when you post things, people tend to, to see it more, at least for now, on Instagram, more than they would see it on Facebook from a organic reach perspective, all right? So this is one aspect. And of course, there's the advertising, which we will cover, which we will cover a bit more. Do you have any questions about organic versus, versus non-organic? All right. All right, and also, um, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a minor aesthetic change, but it was a big deal from an Instagram community perspective, is using square and landscape images. How, how annoying has it been for some of you, you're trying to get everybody in the picture and then you have to, cr you have to crop people from, from sides of pictures that, that, that you wanted to use. So uh, um, a good portion of the, so there has been, been many workarounds, but then recently 
uh, uh, Instagram has allowed landscape images. So what you do simply is the same picture that you usually post, you just zoom out. And this way, uh, instead of having, you know, instead of having a bigger square, you'd have like a sh it's a shorter image, but but you get most of the of the image being there. So what that means for you uh, is you have a better, you have more room in order to be able to share uh, your images uh, uh, the way you might want to, you know, landscape versus square. All right, uh, and also another 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 aspect is Instagram doesn't have links in their comments or so if you have a link in the status update, you can't click it. If you've tried to click it, you can't click it. Um, why 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 would Instagram do that? Spam, spam is one. Uh, spam is one. I mean, what, what is it? The only you're leaving, of course, that, 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 that's 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 uh, element. But most of it is, is spam. What they're trying to do is they're trying to keep it, you know, very native to images, to pictures. That's why you can only s still use it over a mobile phone. There's no web interface for you to upload any picture from, you know, Google Image Search to upload it. To. You still have to take the picture from your phone or at least sync it to your phone to upload it. So there's the additional level of that. That's part of trying to keep the quality. Uh, so there's no link. You, you can't say visit our website for this. So the workaround that others have done is they're using their, the only link that works throughout all of Instagram is your bio. As in your bio, you have your URL. You can have, so that's the only clickable link. So what a lot of people are doing uh, is they're using that. They change that link every couple of days based on what they want to share. So. If they might say that we posted a new video about so and so and so, click on our bio link in order to go and see that video or to go see our website or that offer and so on. So the bio link is, is not something that you'd post and forget about for years and years like you might do on Facebook or on Twitter. On Instagram, it's something that you would use a bit dynamically. That's a workaround for now in order to get uh, to invite users to click on links. That's the only way today for you to click on links. So that's a workaround that, that others have used. <coughs> and also for, uh, uh, for Snapchat as well, a lot of people use, um, who here is active on Snapchat or uses Snapchat? All right. As a person, no businesses, yeah, it's, it's still, you know, they're, they're, they're getting there. There are a lot of businesses in the UAE using Snapchat, but still on a personal level. Okay, okay. Uh, that's another topic for probably another another session that we can we can organize uh, with with TCOM. But uh, it's a it's a growing social network. It's video based, and it disappears in 24 hours. So I'm very active on Snapchat. But if you join today and you follow me, you'll only see the last 24 hours of what I've posted. Everything else disappears in a sense. All right. So as a brand, they've been struggling with you know we're investing this money and this activity in it, and it and it's it's gone. Yeah, so, so, so 24 hours is, 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 is generally is, is the most you're looking at in terms of that. So the reason, there are many reasons behind it, but a lot of it has to do with attention. You know, when you know this is going to disappear and you're, you're only able to see it during that period, <coughs> you pay closer attention. You, you, you look at the video more, you take, uh, you take more attention to look at images and so on. So that's a, that's a different topic. But Instagram has been used in order to share uh, Snapchat images, so because with Snapchat you can add people by their image. So if, if those of you here are active on Snapchat, they can go ahead and add me here with, with this code. So you get to see a lot of usage of Instagram to post things on, uh, to get people to follow you on Snapchat. Um, so to talk more about advertising and examples of advertising, so what and what, uh, so these are examples from, you know, locally here in the UAE. So looking at uh, 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 a post, an ad on Instagram is, is, is like a regular post. So you get to see there's the account, all right? There's the post, which is the image. There's the content that you have below it and the image, of course. So it's a post like any other post, but there's a slight variation, which is this, which says it's a, it's a sponsored post, all right? But it's a regular image, regular post like you would usually uh, post. So. <coughs> In terms of when you want to do it as a business, you think of it as a regular post that you usually do. So we're looking at an image and text. And as we discussed earlier, there's no link. So you can, try, you can, write, you can write a link here. You can write the link. That's no problem writing the link. But it's not clickable. So if they click on anything here, it won't take them anywhere unless you have it somewhere else in the bio, as we were discussing. So you need to use this from an ad perspective. For this to be as a standalone, you know, there's no reliance on it going somewhere else. Yes? Yeah, but can somebody copy the URL and then paste on the browser and go there? 
Can somebody copy the URL? Um, they might be able to do so, but that's a, we're asking a lot of the users. You know, we'd like to, as businesses, we'd like to think that people really like us. They care about the images we post. They're going to go through a lot of effort in order to do things. But you know, if we want to be honest with ourselves, we really have to do a lot for them to to go through. They need to win. Some, I mean, there has to be some major incentive for them to actually go through that process. Uh, what I see others have done, have done is, if it's a short URL and it's easy and they're interested, they can they can open up a browser and just put in the URL quickly. But if it's a visit our website, which is this huge domain slash blah blah slash blah blah, it's like okay, I'm done, I'm lost. So, um, but yes. Is the advertisement option available? It's been available to businesses as of September 30, which is, gives you two months. It's already available. It's already available. We've been, we've been doing this for, for many of our clients. And what we've observed now is the cost of clicks and visits and so on. It's generally lower than other social networks at this point because the volume of ads is not high. Because the way this works is all it's bidding. So let's say you say you want to pay uh, two dirhams for a click. I say three dirhams. Brahim says four dirhams. They give it to Brahim because he wants to pay more than, more than you and I would do. So it's a bidding process. So since there are no many people here that are, uh, that are you know, uh, advertising, there, there are volumes, but not as much as on Facebook today because they've been doing that for years versus two months now. So the costs generally are lower, at least for now. Okay. So, so for a business account, would that be different from a personal account? I mean, because for a personal account, I can't find anywhere. So you can OK, so that's interesting. So you want to use advertising for a personal account? Um, I, I just want to know, because currently I don't see any options to say that. Sure, sure, of course, of course. Where, uh, uh, where in Instagram today, there is no technical difference between a personal account and a business account. So on Facebook, it's different. On Facebook, you have a page, and we have a personal account, and we can't friend people or message them unless we're personal friends and so on, and the page is different. So that distinction today is not available in Instagram. So uh, running ads, you could do that as a business or as a regular person and, and so on. So yeah. Where are you going to find that, though? I mean, how do they All right. Uh, so the question is, where, how would we do that? Now, you know that Facebook bought Instagram a few years back. They bought them for around $700 million, all right? Um, do you know how many employees they had? Just, just if you want to venture. How many employees, how many empl employees did Instagram have? Uh, 10, 2,000, six, wow. <laughs> 400, 100, it was 10. So, but they had a huge community, and they bought for $700 million. And people said at the time that Facebook were, were, were crazy for investing that amount of money. And they bought WhatsApp after that. For, do you remember how? In billions. They were looking at 19 billions and so on. So $700 million was, you know, that's, that's nothing. That's just, you know, nothing. And now with the opening up of the advertisement, also that would really open up a lot of options for advertising. Now, since Facebook owns Instagram, what they did, which, which, which I think is, is intelligent and simple as well, is they already have a large community of people who are businesses who are using Facebook advertisements. Mm -hmm. And they've already developed a, a very strong advertising engine as Facebook. So what they've done is the Instagram advertising, they've attached it to Facebook's existing ad engine. So if you're familiar with Facebook's advertising engines, uh, the Facebook Ads Manager or Facebook Power Editor, you can you are in a position to easily run Instagram ads if you're already familiar with Facebook advertisements. So that's a, a, a big step for Instagram. This way, they've been able to, to have a very strong engine from day one, and they've been able to already have access to a large amount of businesses and their agencies who have been running ads, and they're familiar with the interface, uh, and so on. So we'll talk more about, a bit more about the targeting, but as a concept, you need to be on Facebook's, uh, Facebook's advertisement. So facebook.com slash ads, that, that, that should be enough for you to, to, to go ahead and, 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 join, uh, and join Facebook's advertising. Uh, so that means you manage Instagram ads on Facebook? You manage Instagram ads, you manage Instagram ads using Facebook's advertising engine, yes. So there's no Instagram interface for ads. It's on Facebook, and you choose that. You choose the text. You choose what it looks like. Okay. And then, you know, it, then it's being pushed out to the Instagram network. So <laughs> that means you have to link the Instagram account to a Facebook. That means you have to link the Instagram account to a Facebook advertising engine, but you do that once. once. You do that once. Once you do that, uh, and, and uh, the rest is simpler in terms of you choose an image. Okay. 
you, your account is already linked and you already have, uh, 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 you know, you just put in the text that you need, uh, the limit of characters, whatever it might be, and you post that. How many that. accounts you can, you can link? Or you okay, so, you know, uh, uh, you started off that saying that you have a personal account, but now you have like 20 accounts that you want to do, and you, you can do as many accounts as you need, that's fine. Oh, thank you. It's, it's all built for you, to, for, for you to take advantage of this, for them to make money, and just, you know, everybody's happy, and, in a sense. So what's the reach of these numbers? What's the reach of? For, uh, for advertisements? All right, so hashtags have to do with the, or, with the organic reach we spoke about in the beginning. So this has nothing to do with the advertisements and the payments. So the payments will allow you to reach a big audience based on how much you pay and what you target. So for example, there are tar targeting options in Facebook engine and hence Instagram's engine. Um, these social networks, they know a lot about us, all right? They know how old we are, they know what we're interested in. They know what languages we speak. They know who our friends are. They know who we interact with. They know what pages we interact with, what brands we're interested in. They know that when you're bored here in my session and you open up Facebook, they know that you're physically in Media City here at, uh, at this time. Um, we, you check Facebook from work a lot and from home as well. So they know physically where you spend 90% of your times. They know physically where you are. Um, so there's a lot of information that can be used to target. So for example, we've done many campaigns that says, that says for example, so let's say we want to do, we want to promote the coffee shop here at N5. Uh, you can run ads on Instagram and Facebook that say, uh, this is physically where the N5 coffee shop is located. Let's look at three kilometers around it and advertise to people who are physically within three kilometers of this coffee shop. So this has been made available only a few months ago. So this way there are universities in Knowledge Village, there are businesses in Media City and Internet City and the other parts of TCOM that when people are there at work and they open up Facebook or Instagram, they get to see a promotion for this in five coffee shop versus somebody in Sharjah uh, or, or Al Ain who, who you know, physically, uh, they're very far away from the coffee shop and less likely to join, uh, to come to the coffee shop. So that's, because Facebook knows wh uh, where we are, they, they can do that targeting. Uh, you can also target based on interests, you can target based on existing audiences, you can target based on, so there's a long list of, you can target, you know, we have a big community of, of 200 plus expat citizens, uh, different, different, different nationalities within the UAE. You can target, you want to say, I want to target this specific part of expats and so on. So it's, it's, very, it's very advanced. They know, they know a lot about us and everything they have is things that we've, we've given them. I know a lot of you. We've given them everything, so that's, it's, not, uh, it's not them going into our ha houses and our minds and just you know, taking out stuff. It's just us feeding, uh, feeding the, the engine. So that information is there, available for you as a business. So you need to have two hats here. I know personally you might freak out privacy and so on, but you're here as an Instagram business session, more or less. So you're looking at how you can take advantage of this as a business in order to better target the audience that you need who care about this sort of stuff. Okay. What other questions do we have about the advertisements? Yes. Um, sorry, it wasn't in regards to advertisements. It's fine, it's fine. Go ahead and ask. Just in regards to posting, so there seems to be so much sort of like differing information about timings of posting. And okay. Like that. So I noticed that that makes a significant difference. All right, all right, all right. So for this region, I mean, I don't know. All right, all right. Uh, this is a common question I get about the timing of postings. Um, it's important, but usually the people who obsess about the timings are the same people who cannot update their pages every day, who have poor content generally, and they look at something as advanced as timing. So timing is a way to optimize your content. So the theory behind it is that uh, people are uh, more available to check social media content during certain times of the day more than others. So for example, we do some work for, for McDonald's in terms of promotion and, and activity on, the, on their social media accounts. We do activity around lunchtime. So it doesn't make sense for us to do it after lunch or uh, and so on. So for example, we do activity around that. So the, that specific business that we help promote, uh, that timing is important for their type of business. So that's something to keep in mind. And there's another category when you have people who are active during the day. So a lot of us are active on social media during work. I know you, you might not want to say that or if you're into that, but we see activity on, on, on advertisements. So we see how it drops close to five and six o'clock saying, you know, I'm done over the next couple of hours. I'm leaving work. I have time tomorrow to check my social media again. And, you know, you know, so, so we, see, we, we see a drop towards, you know, end of working hours. We see an increase towards the evening. And then there's a nice 
bump, you know, the first few hours of the day, 8, 9, 10 a.m., depending on what time you come to work. So, uh, uh, so we see an increase in that. So the timings for those, so the good timings are mornings, uh, afternoons, but, you know, j just after lunch and so on. So those are generally busy, uh, you know, good times. Five, six, seven, you know, people are leaving their work. So, but then you have another jump towards the evening. So those are generally, very generally, uh, uh, times of interest. But it doesn't make sense to obsess about these times if uh, we see this a lot with brands or personal accounts, if you're unable to keep your, your page active every day. So if you're on social media, generally, the rule would be to act, be active every day, at least once, you know, once a day, that would be a good, a good number. So we see businesses that open up an account, they're active the first three weeks, and then you know, the last update was in 2013 or 2014, and so on. And then if they want to active again, they go into optimizing time. The first thing that I'd obsess about is having uh, uh, regular updates and then working on the times. Did that answer your question? Okay. Yes. If you're selling a product yes. uh, through Instagram, uh, usually the, the KPI is to, let's say, I want to make it back to an e-commerce site. Okay. So is the advertisement, is it clickable to push people or measure, let's say, I don't want to say convert, it's actually uh, shifting leads to the e-commerce site and then you can measure from there. Okay, okay. Uh, this is a very good question about the KPIs and what we're doing. And this has to do with advertising and generally why we're on social media. When, when, when I have sessions with clients and they tell me, I want to do a Facebook page, I want to do this on Instagram, maybe Snapchat and so on, and I ask them why. They say, what do you mean why? You know, everybody's, everybody's doing, you know, it's social media, aren't you in this business? I was like, yes, but my question is, why, you know, I mean, why are you doing that? And I, I don't always get quite, I don't get strong answers. You know, I get of, it's the future, or everybody's doing it, or we want to engage our, our, our customers. It's like, okay, do you want to define engagement? And they look at me saying, you know, don't you want to sell us your services? But, uh, you know, when I ask the basic questions of why the business needs to be there, I get these vague answers. All right, and I'm very clear. I ask them, um, so where, you know, where's your money from? And they look at me saying, what does that have to do with anything that has to do with social media? You guys are, that island there, you do your, you open up the pages, you fill them up, you do whatever you need to do, and then leave us alone here in our business. We need to, we do we do what we do, and then we reach out to you to to promote whatever it is we want you to promote. So a lot of businesses are in that mindset. So in that mindset, KPIs and business numbers and so on, they don't make any sense at all for them to discuss that. But when you deal with businesses who are uh, you know, genuinely interested in this. So we've done a lot of this with clients. So for example, we're working with, with an on-demand taxi service. So you open up an on-demand taxi service in, in Saudi and you order uh, and you order, order a taxi. All of the work we do for them is customer acquisition. So we do social media activity, advertisements, content, and all of the KPIs for them are about uh, getting, getting new users to download their app, getting them to sign up, getting them to use their service. So there are you know, a long list of KPIs that we look at every day. And we look at, okay, if we change this type of image, well, how do the numbers change? Do we have an increase in the number of users or a decrease? If we do this type of advertisements on Instagram, is this better or worse? If we change the budget on Google for this, what happens? You know, what do we do with this on Facebook? And so the KPIs from the beginning need to be defined for every business. So uh, simple examples, we're doing another work for a, a medical client. When they do a campaign of, uh, simple campaign of 2,000 dirhams, they sell 8,000 dirhams to 12,000 dirhams worth of services. So when they do an ad campaign of 2,000 dirhams, you know, they get four times, five times, six times the returns depending on uh, you know, what they're selling and what they're targeting and so on. So these are KPIs to look into from the beginning, saying what is it as a business we want? Do we want more users? And we have to define more users, that means signing an e-commerce. So, you know, uh, there's a long list of KPIs for e-commerce. Number of people who are signing up to the service, so they don't have to buy yet, just to sign up. Others, how many are putting, uh, uh, how many are putting the, uh, 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 products in the cart, even, even if they're not buying. So that's, because they, they use that as a wish list. So that's, that's another KPI. A third would be uh, how many times they visit the site, how many are new people who are visiting the site again. Uh, fourth would be how much time are they spending on the site? Are they spending a, a minute and a half, two minutes, four minutes, half a minute? So because you, you get to see uh, if they're returning or not. Um, how many of those are buying? And then if they're buying, what's the average ticket size? And so on. So there's a long list of KPIs for e-commerce specifically. So once you decide on what your KPIs are, then you start to look at advertising saying, OK, to increase this KPI, which is the number of signups, you're going to do ads specifically to drive signups. 
So there are specific ads that would take you to a sign up. So you can use specific codes to, to track how many people are signing up. So you get to see that I put in 300 dirhams, I got 60 users. That means if I put in 5,000 dirhams, I might get this amount of users and so on. So you start to do that. If another KPI has to do with how much time they spend on the site, uh, 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 you could look at different ads that take them to different parts of your website, for example. If it's e-commerce, you have uh, it's advanced. You can do a cart. You can do ads specifically for people who have items in their cart but they didn't buy yet. So you get to see sometimes, for example, when you visit a website, if it's e-commerce or others, and then when you go around, you get to see you get to see that ad, whatever you, you know, on different places wherever you go on Facebook or on websites and or on Instagram and so on. There is advanced targeting where if you go to a page or a product and you see a product, wherever you go on the internet, that product follows you. So they, they know, they've, they've been able to track that you've bought that product. And you know, uh, uh, one example that happened with me once, uh, uh, there was a printer that, that I wanted to buy. We have one and we're just buying another one. I, I went to that page, I bought that printer. It shipped to me, I have it. Over the next few weeks, I always get the ad, not only for the product, uh, for the website itself, but for the product itself. And then I look, you know, the printer's here, just, you know, just please, just, I, I really bought it, it's just right next to me, go away. But, you know, it's, it's that level of, of targeting and advertisements that, that you can get to reach using Instagram, Facebook, Google advertisements, and Twitter, and so on. Yes? Um, I work for uh, on-demand using streaming service. Okay. And one of the challenges that we have is we have a lot of customers to share all the time. Okay. Uh, so we literally have releases, Arabic, national music, uh, you know, artist engagement programs. So we're really, really heavy with things that we want to share. Okay. What are the best practices on number of posts per day or whatever, specifically for businesses of our nature that have a lot to share? Um, so we're contemplating six posts a day or you know, 50, but you know, sponsor five or whatever. So what are the best practices for posting? All right, all right. So the question is, how many, how many times to post a day? Now, generally, but that, that doesn't apply to you. Generally, for a good portion of businesses, having one update a day is generally a good number. Before, like two years ago or three years ago, we used to do two, the recommendation was two or three updates a day. But now it's become much more expensive. So let's say on Facebook, as, as we said in the beginning, the level of organic reach is low, depending on your content and your audience size and so on. So you can post six, seven times a day, but if people don't see it, you know, what's the point of really working on, on things that people might not see if you don't have an advertising budget, let's say, and so on. So generally, generally, for general businesses, we're looking at being active daily. So that's one post a day. So we're looking at 20 posts a week. Uh, sorry, 20 posts a month. So that's a, g a very general uh, aspect. Now, if you're in a service which is very active, so you know, uh, such as this service or a news website, for example, I have clients who say, but look at this news website. They post eight times a day. Why are you telling us one post a day? And that's the same client who takes them three weeks to give us a picture. So, uh, 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 but they complain they want to do like six posts a day uh, 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 and, and so on. So um, when, you're, w when you are in an industry that's very content driven, that means you have a, a lot of content, uh, different parts and, and so on. You can and should post more than once a day. So once a day doesn't apply in that particular, uh, par particular incident. And I would look at different mediums differently. So for example, on Twitter, you can post much more than what you can post on, on Facebook from a medium perspective. So on Twitter, it's okay to go to six, eight, and 10 times, 10 times during the day, but we're looking at spacing them out. Because on Twitter, uh, 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 how many of you are here are on Twitter? today? How many of you are active on Twitter? Okay. We, we need to define activity on Twitter and so on. But usually I get yes, yes, and then it's like, when was the last time you posted? You know, I get to see hands receding. So um, the Twitter way it works, it's, a, it's an information stream. So let's say I posted now something just before going, uh, uh, walking up here saying, you know, I'm speaking at uh, UAE Innovation Week and so on and so. And people who were there, they would see it. A couple of hundred people would see it, let's say, and, and so on. Uh, and then in two hours later, it's a different amount. If I post something else in two hours, it's a different batch of people who will see it. Or three, you know, the afternoon, the evening. So it's a, it's a way of the people step in and they step out of Twitter. This is how it's currently used. So in this case, if you're media centric on Twitter, you could do 
six, eight, ten, ten times a day, uh, and keeping in mind that your consumption is media-based, audio and music, you can take advantage of late hours. So don't do the nine to five. You can do six, uh, six, eight p.m., twelve p.m. Uh, a.m. So you can schedule those as well. So you can, you can take advantage of the twenty-four hours and the different time zones that you service in the region. So 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 that would help. Okay. What other questions do we have? It doesn't have to be necessarily Instagram. It could be a bit more about uh, about general, your general business, uh, general other. <coughs> time. How are we doing in terms of time? How much time do we still have? All right, so the question is about uh, so the question is about uh, verified accounts, and that applies for Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as well. So the concept behind verified accounts, the real concept behind what we want. So the real concept is what we want is you know it's a good ego thing for us. It's an official page, not a lot of people have it. It's it's you know it's a unique thing to have in terms of verified account having. It's a blue it's a blue tick next to your name that says this is the official account of Ayman Aitani. So the, the concept behind it, the original concept behind it of the social networks is if there are many impersonators. So if there are many, if you search for Ayman Aitani and there are 12 Ayman Aitani, so there are many wannabes who want to be me, all right? <laughs> and then, but you know, the official account is the one that has the tick box. So I'm not a singer or a performer or whatever. So there, there are no many other, there are no fan pages for me, but let's assume there were. So the one when you search for Ayman Aitani, you get to see the one that has the blue one, that, the blue tick, that means that's the official account of Ayman. So that's the original concept behind verification, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, the way to get it is to work directly with them. So we do work with their offices in Dublin and, 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 the, and Dubai as well and so on. So there's a case we open with them. We show them proper ident identification. We open a case with them saying, you know, this is the official Ayman Aitani account. This is, these are his official papers, his official uh, corporate license and blah, and blah, blah, and so on. These are the impersonating accounts and this is the problem we have. So you build a case, they study it, and based on that, they would verify the account. So this applies for Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and so on. So it's generally the same process where you build the case directly with them. So there's no way to uh, talk to an agency. You know, you have, it has to be done directly with them. So there's no company that does it for you. You, have to, you or the agency that does work for you would have to reach out directly to them to do that. Okay. Uh, I know you're hoping for a better answer, but you know, <laughs> for easier fix, but uh, yes. Rahim. If you're just starting in social media and we just wanted to promote a product or promote myself, for example, would you recommend Instagram to spend the time? What, what, what would you be promoting? Like, I just want to promote myself as something, like uh, anything. Like I just want to it's okay, Ibrahim. Share, share with people the, 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 the videos that you're working on and so on. Tell them a bit more about that. Like, I curate videos on YouTube. Okay, what's it called? Then, then look into it. What's it called so that they can it's, check it? It's called Arab, Arab 15S. Okay. Like, I, I got the videos from Instagram and I curate them on, um, on YouTube. But I have all the accounts on all the other social networks. Uh, on Facebook, Snapchat, uh, Instagram, Telegram, all the new things that I have. But if I want to, to, to have like a step further, like do you recommend uh, Instagram for it or? For Arab 15S or for Ibrahim Ramzat who manages Arab 15S? Um, for Arab 15S, uh, I think uh, the Instagram part would really help. So if you look at what U-Turn do, for example, U-Turn have uh, their own channels, uh, uh, very active on YouTube, uh, uh, very good content, and full length YouTube. But they have a lot of 15 seconds that they do on their Instagram account. So I would look into that account a bit more just, just to have an idea about how they're linking the full-fledged content that they have on YouTube to you know, the 15-second uh, teasers on, on, on Instagram. So they have many categories. Some of it are teasers that lead to the longer one. And some of them are standalone 15 seconds that are really enough for, uh, uh, for you know, it's standalone. It's standalone, it's standalone uh, for what it is. So Instagram would be of interest for out of 15S for the uh, because what you're cu curating is, is Arabic content in terms of video and humor and so on. And there's a lot of video consumption, a lot of video consumption on Instagram. So that would be generally of interest for you for, to be more active on Instagram, to have these tidbits of content there to remind people to, to go to the, to the longer version. Does that answer your question? Of course. Yes, sure.
Yes. We use Buffer, one of those tools to post in LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, yes. and Google simultaneously. What do you think is a better strategy? To post the same thing in all places at the same time, to try to mix them, to obviously, when, when, and the answer cannot be, we cannot have a specific strategy for each other, we don't have time for that. So, <laughs> simple solution, what could be a nice way of doing it? Sure, sure, sure. Two hours a day? Uh, what do you, uh, when you say we, what industry are you in? What do you do? Well, we're in financial services and we post, uh, we use all the, we post content that we find interesting, these are our own content. Mm -hmm. so whatever kind of articles are related about the services we provide or investing and saving and stuff, we post that sort of content. But your target audience are other investors or what's uh, your target audience? Would be potential clients. Which, you know, people yeah. who would contribute to the fund? Yeah, who would, who would, who would like to invest and save that. Okay, okay. So that's a very specific niche, uh, niche audience. What channels are you on? What, what social media channels are you active on? Um, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Google. How is Facebook working for you? So uh, in his scenario, he's reaching out to a very specific type of audience, which are people who, who, have, who are affluent, who have money, and they usually invest uh, with them, uh, either for financial advice or they invest with you on, on, on other projects and so on. So it's a very specific uh, uh, niche of audience. How is Facebook working for you for this? Okay, I, I most of the people who are there are people who know us, who are friends. Who are, so it's, I don't think we're getting much business value out of it. Yes. Because this is, this, is, this, is why, this is why I'm bringing that topic up, because what you're hoping for is to spend less time on social media activity and to have, more, you know, to have a, a bigger effect. So you're asking for tools and techniques to use to do a small things that will have effect across the different channels. So one of the first things I would look at is I would look at the channels and the reach of these. So when you post something on Facebook, how many people from your audience are seeing it? and how many people are actually interacting. And then since you're dealing with a small audience that you might, you know, we're looking at hundreds of people, in a sense, those that are really active with you, you can get to see how many of those are coming out from your, your Facebook channel or your Twitter channel. So you can decide, because you might want to kill off your Facebook account. If it's, you know, if it's, uh, if it's a small community size already, you don't get a lot of engagement. You might, in your specific audience, you might, you might want to kill off your Facebook account uh, whatever you're saving time there, you spend it more on uh, LinkedIn, uh, in your particular case, potentially an email newsletter, that might, be, that might be also something that you might want to look into a bit more for your specific niche type of audience uh, for that. So this way, you're reducing the channels that, uh, that you're active on, Twitter maybe. So, uh, so this way, you would reduce uh, the amount of time spent on those and you invest them in channels that are much more likely to give you a better return. And since you've been active on these channels for a while, it's a process where you go through your old uh, insights and statistics. LinkedIn have that, Twitter have that, Facebook have that. You can see how many people are actually seeing your posts and how many people are interacting. And you can make an enlightened decision saying, I don't want this channel, I'm gonna invest more in this channel. So uh, this, this, this would be a, a, way, a way to do it. And then a second part that applies a bit more to, to, to the rest of you is it's a common practice of, of posting the same thing on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. By the book, the social media book I also teach at the university by the book, it's, you know, it's not a good practice to do and you shouldn't do it and so on. But to be practical, I know a lot of us are active on social media just to be active there. We just want to you know, do this as fast as we can and just you know, go back to, to something else that we want to do. In that case, if you really need to post the same thing on different channels, a slight variation, a, a tip, a slight variation that will make a big difference and keep the work that you're doing. So let's say you're posting something on Instagram and on Twitter. I would use, I would upload it directly. So when you upload the image directly on Twitter, upload it directly to Twitter versus using Instagram Twitter posts. So when you post something on Twitter, um, it would, uh, do we have access to the internet on this computer? Do we have access to the internet here on this computer? Sure. Just a quick. Uh, All right, so this is something I posted uh, uh, d d just before going on stage, all right? So this is me, I'm speaking at N5Hub, Instagram for Business, so, uh, so on and so forth. I posted that on Instagram. I wanted to post the same thing on Twitter, 
but I did. Uh, I posted the same thing. Uh, there were two ways for me to do it. There was the easy way, and there was just a bit more complex way. So the easy way was when you post to Instagram, there's a button, Twitter button. What it does is it posts the same thing onto Twitter. So I'd have the same text, and then I'd have a link, a link which is the image. It's an Instagram link to the image. So that would have been the quick fix. I did an additional step, and that's the tip that, that I would suggest that, that you do, is what I did was I copied and pasted the text from Instagram onto Twitter. So what happens here is, see this image here? This image that, that I'm posting, this image that I posted, because I uploaded it directly to Twitter, it shows up here with a full image. If I wanted to use the shortcut of using the Instagram app to post to Twitter, it, this wouldn't be here, and then this, you know, and there, then, then there would be a link here. So for, for now, when you're going through my Twitter feed, for example, all right, uh, there it is. All right, so when you, so for example, I was a guest on NBC. When you're going through my, my Twitter feed, for example, you get to see this showing up. If I wanted to take the shortcut, I'd post this. So I'm not saying rewrite the content. What I'm saying is, uh, when you post it, post it directly within the app itself. So post it within the Twitter interface, post it within the Instagram interface, within the Facebook interface, for example. This way, just to make sure that the, the image is there. So if you want to post to Facebook, for example, use your Instagram app and select Facebook. The post would be nice and big on Facebook. So it's a nice big post, because Facebook and Instagram are the same company in a sense. So it would show that on Twitter, go through the web interface and, and go ahead and add that. So uh, this is just something that you'll still posting the similar content to the different channels. It just looks better per channel. Yes. All right, all right. So we have three questions here. The first question is, is it worth buying followers? The second is, how do we get, uh, you know, if we don't want to buy followers, uh, you know, how do we get a bigger number of followers? And the third is, how do we get these followers to actually engage in the business and buy and do it? So it's a three-part question. So the first part about buying followers, okay, just, just let's tackle the concept of followers. Still until today, we have a lot of, you know, a lot of the people I, I work with and the clients we deal with, the number of followers is always the obsession. So always that's the first thing we tackle, we get that out, out of the way because whatever we do for their business, yes, yes, but I have a thousand less than my competitor. <laughs> whatever we do for them, they don't care. <laughs> so uh, we, we have teams dedicated for them, we, do, we, we, sell their, we sell their inventory, we get people to come to their event. Still, you know, there's a number of followers here and there. Now buying followers is an easy way out and as, as everything else, um, there's no point. You know, you can, you can buy followers for 200 dirhams, 300 dirhams, you, you get a nice jump in followers on, on Instagram, or you can even get, you can buy people to like your photos as well, uh, and, and, and so on. But um, for those of you who tried to go on a diet, and you know, I, I cheated, I had a donut before coming here, so, I, uh, so it's, it's difficult. So you can take a pill and just, you know, pills and they would help us with our diets and so on, but then these followers are, they're fake, they don't do anything, they're just a number. So they don't, they don't see the posts, they don't like the posts, they would never come to your event or buy anything. So these, these are virtual accounts. They're a big business, a lot of people do them. But buying this is, you're just having a number which doesn't do anything. So they, they don't interact, they don't do anything with you. This is one. Two, um, what Facebook and Instagram and Twitter are doing is they're trying to identify these fake accounts and they're closing them down. So we've had cases with clients, they call us up and say, we dropped 5,000 followers overnight, you know, uh, what happened, what did you guys do, and so on. Then we look into a bit further, and then when we dig into it a bit more, before they engaged us six months ago, they bought 5,000 followers, Facebook found them with time, and they, and they closed them down. So those that you buy today, you know, the pounds we lose today by cheating, you know, we will gain them very soon uh, after that. So buying followers is not... You know, it's not generally a practice that, that would help. So this is one aspect. The second part of organic followers, that's very, dif it's difficult, it requires experimentation, a lot of work, and I see nodding in the back, it's a lot of, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to get uh, followers. So it's not a matter of months, it's a matter of a good, a good it's a matter of weeks, it's a matter of months. So it's a long-term process, this is one. Uh, two, your content plays a role. So for example, in my case, I have around 8,000 followers on, Insta on, Insta on Twitter, let's say. Uh, if I spoke politics, my number of followers would grow. 
if I spoke, if I did, if I created problems on the internet, a lot of people, you know, they talk, they go into negative topics and issues with brands and so on, I'd gain more followers, but I'm not doing that. Um, if I spoke more about uh, uh, entertainment elements, so participating in uh, uh, popular cultural discussion and things that are happening on TV and so on, I'd gain more followers. So uh, for me, for example, generally my obsession is not the amount of followers it's about. So you could do these things. So you could talk about problematic things. Uh, you could talk about popular culture elements. So as a business, problematic might not be the solution, but talking about uh, you know, uh, popular content elements. So UAE Innovation Week, that's a popular topic now. Try to participate in that discussion. Use those hashtags. So you have, like, say, three, three or four hashtags here. Look into those. Uh, see which ones are of interest. Use those hashtags. So that would help. Another thing is if you retweet or repost or, or like other people's photos or images and so on, uh, they'd look into the because you know they'd look into the account. It happens to you personally when if you see who's that account who liked my photo or retweeted. We check each and every one, each and every one. So we they might if they take a look at your account, so uh, and they might like what they see. So uh, if they're interested, so for me they look at it. If it's very social media, they don't care, they move on. If it's nice pictures about something else of interest to them, they follow. It depends on, on, on what it is. So what I share is mostly web, mo anything you want to do about web, mobile, social media, uh, some Star Wars, uh, now that the movie's coming out, but you know, it's, it's, it's a lot about, about you know, uh, these are the very specific topics. So if you look at food or nightlife, yeah, I'm not, I'm not the right person for that. So, so it depends, it depends on, 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 on the niche that you have. The third is converting them, these followers to the business, it's a bit tricky here in terms of, you need to look into the, in the beginning, um, what is it that you're selling? Um, I, I have a, a, the sugar art um, cake decorating business. What's a sugar art cake? It's, What's that? Well, well, I, my business. I was about to talk about diets for the last 15 minutes. <laughs> Tell me about your. Uh, it's basically um, working with um, fondant and sugar and to produce cakes and you know, cake decorating and things like that. And we're looking at very nice pictures, very nice images, very juicy. Yeah. It shouldn't be an issue for you to get followers, you know. <laughs> Generally, you know, people looking at that, it's, it's good stuff. It's things that we, we try not to have, but we have a lot of. And especially if it's art, you have an art element, so it's visually very pleasing. Uh, do you have an Instagram page already? Do, sure, yeah. let's go ahead and promote it. What's your page? Um, the, the pictures aren't professional because I'm sort of just doing them. It's fine. What, what's the account? Uh, Kate Khalifa. Uh, C-A-K-E. Uh-huh. And then Khalifa. K-H? Yeah. L F A. All right. And we also have Brahim. What's your YouTube? It's youtube.com slash. I don't have a YouTube. Okay. Arab 15S. It's on. Arab 15S. Slash Arab 15S? Yes. All right. So these are the two ones that we're looking at. So. Kik Khalifa. Vegan with sugar cakes? Sorry? V vegan with uh, vegan options? You mentioned yeah. vegan options with there sugar cakes? All right, so if you want to get some juicy foods, we're going to kick Khalifa. All right. Yeah, here. It shouldn't be an issue for you. It looks nice. What camera are you using? Sorry? What camera are you using? Camera? Yeah. Okay, is it an iPhone 6S? It's a Samsung. Samsung, okay. The content is fine. It's great. The content looks good. I would also include people who are uh, enjoying your stuff. For whoever wants, or they can get a discount. So I'm sure they'd be more inclined to. Yeah. So, for example, this this is nice. This is good. You know, having having an Instagram post uh, about a WhatsApp conversation that you had and so on. Um, I would tag the people who are in the images or the families are in the images, okay. and also uh, I need to look at your use of hashtags, but. Uh, there are many hashtags. If you look at the presentation, you know, it's with the organizers. I've included some, uh, a lot of them are food-based. Uh, uh, and they were able to move to, uh, to actually physical stores. So I would look into what hashtags they're using, uh, what type of things that they're posting. So that might be of interest to you, uh, to you as well. Ibrahim, you mentioned here the Arab 15S. So these are curated video content. Is that, is that it? They're all in Arabic. Yeah. Okay. So this is content that, 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 you're, that you're curating, preparing for other people's. Yes. 
All right. All right. Does anyone else want, want us to show, to, to show their, their pages? We're good. <laughs> yes, what's your page? What is it? Instagram or YouTube or what? Yeah, Instagram forward slash N O B I. L O B I? What does Novi Plus do? Novi Plus is a health and fitness lifestyle membership. All right, welcome, Guilt. Oh, that's you. Okay. So, what does Novi Plus do? So, it's a lifestyle membership that makes healthy living more affordable. So, we are a, a healthy network of health fitness and wellness brands. Okay. Do they send them to me or do I have to go to them? Sorry? Do they send them to me or do, do I have to go to them? Food. The brands, the brands, then the food of the brands. So they're not food plans or anything. So we partner with places like Nike, Models, Just okay. Solid, Health Juices. Okay. You sign up to Novi Plus and then you get access to all of these places at a more affordable rate. So every time you go on to the membership, okay. you get exclusive savings. Okay. So okay. helping people in their lifestyle. All right. All right, what other questions do we have? I think we're close to running out of time. Yes? Yes, um, this is regarding the Instagram ad. It could be Instagram, on Instagram, okay? If you have other questions about, you know, social media related and... So, um, the sponsored ads that come, how is the placement uh, selected, as in... You know, the Instagram ad? Yes, the Instagram ad. Placement, you mean... So, when I open my Instagram mm -hmm. account, I can see different kinds of sponsored ads that yeah. come up. So, how... How is that sure, decided? sure, sure, sure. And added to that also is, uh, is there, a, like if someone tags me in a photo, mm -hmm. I get to see it, but do my followers or do my contacts get to see it? Not necessarily, right? No. So how, what does tagging people do? Okay, so it's two part questions, yes. okay. <laughs> the first part is about selection of, of, of adver how, why you're seeing certain ads, not others. So this has to do with two things. The first part is the targeting. So as we started in the beginning, the advertiser, you as an advertiser, can target based on age, gender, interests, location, uh, uh, marital status, uh, expat status, and so on. So, you, so there's a set of specific targeting that you would choose, that an you know, advertiser would choose to target you. So when you see that ad, that means they've selected a certain set of criteria to target you. All right. So that's, uh, 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 that's, that's the first thing. The second thing what Instagram does is they spoke about it a lot when they started, a few months ago started with their ads, is they try to make a balance about the number of ads that you would see. So they, they have a certain ratio internally of one to six or one to eight or whatever it might be, saying that you have to see five, six, seven, eight posts of your friends and of the brands you follow, and then an ad, and then X number of posts that you would see from your, your brand, and then, and then an ad. So there's a balance between what you would see organically from your f people that you follow, and then how many ads you see. So there's a balance between that, so that Instagram stays, so that it just doesn't turn into like a paid, open it up and it's just ads, okay? So that's the first part of your question. The second part is about tagging. What's the point of tagging? It's a way to grow more followers. So what people do is they tag others to get people to see it. So, uh, you know, take it on a personal level. If people like or comment or tag or mention you, you go in and check as a who mentioned me and why. So what they would do is they would go in and check uh, you know, one of the, if it's a sugar account, sugar based account, they check in and they're nice images and so on, I'm going to go in and, you know, if I'm interested in this, I'm going to follow that, you know, or health or whatever. So it depends on what you're into. So the tag is a way to increase discoverability a bit more. But then I have to identify people to tag, right? Like yes. If I want your followers or you to check my page or I have to tag you. Yeah, then yeah, yeah. What you do is, for example, you check UAE Innovates. You get to see, it's like, okay, this guy's talking about Instagram and so on. You get to see, oh, this type of profile is of interest to me, and you tag me, and then I'd look into it. Saying, okay, who's that person who tagged me, and why, and what is it she, you know, she sells? Yes? Like, like, uh, like earlier when we were asking, you were saying, like, not to go and have different accounts and stuff. But, like, so I'll say, for instance, I have, uh, like, I'm a starter, so I go to a lot of these events, and there's, like, really great talks, and because some of my followers are my fellow other entrepreneurs and startups and everything. So I go and tweak in terms of those lines, but my business is related to like online commerce. Then do you think that that would affect my business? 
I going the same? Because I do different in terms of Twitter and I do different in terms of Instagram. So you have two accounts that you manage, the online commerce and the... Uh, no, it's me as a person. It's you as a person? It's me as a person, but then obviously I'm using my company's, uh, because that's the one that's always there on my phone and everything, right? So I'm using my company to a Twitter, mm -hmm. but then the, I talk more in terms of my startup and stuff. As a personal account? No, a link as... On the, on the work on account the as well? Work, yes. Because it's a startup over here. And I okay. Can, and Okay. Of late, and like you know, it, it does go and help me to a certain degree. And then Instagram is purely based on my business, the pictures related to fashion. And but it's the stuff. same account. It's it's the same name, so I'm the Sea Love Five. So if I look at the Instagram account, it's fashion, and if I look at the Twitter account, it's online commerce and uh, and. It's talking about like as a startup. Okay. You know okay. I mean? Okay. So what's it's the question? A startup, it's the so would that affect? Like, should I not be doing that, or should? It, you know, what do you do on a person? Aspect? What do you do on a personal account level? On your personal, do you have a personal account that I you manage? But you're not active on it. Because because my feeling is the startup information is more you more than the more than the uh, online commerce is, and that's fashion related. The online commerce is fashion related, completely fashion related. Yeah, it is fashion related. Because my feeling the startup part is you more than anything else. So you might want to have the startup stuff on your own personal account. Okay, uh, unless you feel the brand can handle both, that's fine. No, it's just that I have got like feedback. So when I do put in the company account, so I have got like interest and stuff. But I'm just wondering in long term, how much damage is that doing to my brand? You know what I mean? Uh, have the, all, have the uh, entrepreneurship and small business uh, folks, have they bought some of your stuff? Uh, I've got more followers and stuff. And I've got but have they, bought, have they bought your things? Because they're not, it's a different audience, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, they share it. You might want to have the startup things on your personal account and grow that. And then on your personal account, you can share whatever you want. The online, com the online commerce, the startups, and so on. So this way you can have, you can have the different, the different asks, especially if you're talking about questions and answers and so on. There was a question here. Yes. Is there, way, is there a way to check the Instagram insights, like the demographic of people? Badish way. Yeah, yeah, yes. Um, the question about Instagram insights. Today, not a lot. There are some tools. Uh, to use, but not a lot. Gee, you know, there, uh, that's coming. But today, uh, you know, natively within Instagram, there's no Instagram.com slash insights like you have on Facebook. Uh, not yet. So there are third party tools that you can use in order to see uh, insights and so on, but uh, not, not a lot. No, it's not built in yet. Uh, in some geo locations, we believe people just keep their GPS of the mobile off. Still, advertisers can target us via the GPS location. If not, basically, I think the new concept of common IP advertising, basically, they, they particular, uh, target the particular IP location of, uh, of mm -hmm. a segment of a uh, villa or, let's say, of a uh, yes. yes. certain uh, IP segment, and based on that, mm -hmm. they put uh, advertisement. Yes. So What's the question? If, if, if I switch off my GPS location, can the advertiser still target me based on the geo location of my place? Okay. Or else, maybe they are targeting my, my IP, IP address. All right, all right. Uh, so the question is about geolocation, uh, about how people can, can find and target you. Uh, before we had smartphones and GPS on smartphones, uh, we used to be targeted by location by IP address. So IP address is basically when you subscribe on the internet from a certain company, do or sell it depending on where you are, um, there's a certain address that gives you the internet. That address they can use to target you physically. So even before GPS, IP address location is there. But it's less accurate in a sense where GPS is more accurate. It tells you that it's, I'm physically here within uh, you know, the N5 location versus I'm in the knowledge village area or uh, so on. So yes, IP addresses will definitely continue to play a role with the advertisements. And, uh, so, but, it, but it's a wider geography. So they know that you're in this area but not within a certain level of accuracy. If GPS is off, Even if your GPS is off, they can still find you within a certain uh, physical physical location in a sense, so within a certain area. Okay. Well, what other questions do we have? All right. Um, if you have any, any information, you can go ahead and add me, Ayman Aitani, A Y M A N I T A N I, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, whatever, LinkedIn, whatever your poison is, it's uh, it's something for you to for you to add. I'm uh, I'm going to spend some time a bit uh, after the session here, so I can answer questions uh, that you have. All right. Thank you so much, Ivan. Sure. That was a great, uh, very, very, very good conversation. So, uh,